Hi guys, this time we will practice conveyors, one of the basic transportation options. To do so, I will design a simple model which will consist from one part to machines and a conveyor which uh, will transport the parts between the machine 001 and machine 002. We will find the conveyor in the transport tab. It's the very first option, the one we will be using. First, I will design the rules to connect connect uh, the, the elements. So let's say that the machine 01 is going to pull part 01 out of world, uh, confirm with OK. Then it will push the parts onto the conveyor. And the conveyor, it's an active element. That means that the conveyor itself can pull and it can push as well. So I'll define a push rule for the conveyor to push the parts into the machine O2. And then the machine O2 is going to send the parts out of the model. I'll switch on the element flow. So it seems this is OK. The part O1 is passive. It comes whenever the machine O1 needs it. Uh, machine O1, let's set the cycle time to one minute. And cycle time of machine O2, let's set it to 10 minutes. Now the last thing to do is to define the properties of the conveyor. I'll double click the conveyor. You see that you can define the input rule, the output rule. Then we've got some other options here. We need to define how long is the conveyor and the length of the conveyor is defined by the length in parts. That means how many places has the part uh, travel from the beginning of the conveyor to the to the end of the conveyor. If we leave 20, 20 parts, that means that the part has to move 20 times to reach the end of the conveyor. The next thing is the maximum capacity. Is can be it can be the same as the length. It can be let's let's make it 10 for example. Uh, Maybe that would mean in reality that uh, otherwise it would be the part if it exceeded 10 parts, it would be too heavy and the conveyor could collapse or something like that. And one more thing here is the speed of the conveyor and the index time uh, means how long does it take for the part to move one position on the conveyor. So if we put one here, then it means that it takes one minute for the part to get from the first position on the conveyor to the second position. And since the conveyor has 20 positions, it will mean 20 minutes takes for the part to get from the beginning to the end. If uh, our conveyor is faster, the index time can be five. In such case, uh, it's gonna take, since it has to move 20 positions, and, uh, oh, sorry, this, this, uh, this uh, way, it's gonna be much slower, and it will actually take 100 minutes to travel from the beginning uh, of the conveyor till the end five minutes per position and 20 positions. If we want to make it faster, uh, let's say that uh, this way it uh, will travel five positions per minute. So 
if I count well, uh, it should be four minutes till the part reaches the end of the conveyor. So that's the index time. And one more thing which uh, we can adjust here or set here is the type of the conveyor. We've got two basic types, fixed and queuing conveyors. In our case, we will be always talking about indexed conveyors, uh, which uh, means uh, that uh, it's defined the length of the conveyor and the capacity is defined by uh, by how many parts we can fit there. Uh, for these other options, you would have to set how large the part is. For indexed options, we do not need to, to bother with that. So we'll be using the indexed options and uh, the difference between fixed and queuing is that if we choose indexed fixed that means once the part reaches the end of the conveyor if the part can't leave the conveyor let's say that the machine o2 is busy in such case uh, the spaces between the parts have to remain the exactly same as in the moment when the, this first part was not able to leave the conveyor. So the conveyor will stop because uh, the first part can't get out of the conveyor and the spaces between, between the parts will remain the same. In case we choose indexed queuing, that would mean that once this uh, first part reaches the end of the conveyor and can't leave the conveyor, uh, the other parts can continue moving on the conveyor till reaching the end behind the first part and then can they can pile up uh, on the conveyor and the conveyor is going to serve like a kind of a buffer. So that's the queuing option and the decision whether it should be fixed or queuing, it depends on what the reality is like. If in reality the conveyor has to stop once this first part can't leave the conveyor, then it's indexed fixed. And if the conveyor can continue working until it's full, it's uh, the option indexed queuing. So let's choose indexed fixed for this moment. I'll confirm it OK. And let's try to run our model. I'll highlight the little guy uh, for slow motion. And do you see that when the conveyor, when the last, when the part which is supposed to leave the conveyor can't do so, then the spaces between the parts remain the same. Let's have a look at the other option. So I stopped the model, I reset the model to zero, I'll double click conveyor 01, I'll change it to indexed queuing, confirm and run again. You see large spaces uh, between, the, between the parts. And now the parts are piling up at the end of conveyor. So it's different behavior than uh, the first behavior. I'll stop the, I'll stop the model. And a few more things. I'll reset the model to zero. A few more things. If you leave the conveyor highlighted, you will not see uh, how the conveyor is actually used during the simulation. I'll stop it, reset to zero. I'll click somewhere else and now you would see the parts moving on the conveyor. And also you can adjust the graphical representation of the conveyor to better represent the reality. So. To do so, you click on the conveyor and uh, you hold control key on your keyboard 
then when you hover over uh, the converter you can with left click you can adjust uh, not only move the whole converter but you can adjust the length of the converter and so on if you hold the shift key you should be able to adjust you should be able to do uh, bends and so on the conveyor should uh, in the model should be about the same size as you intend uh, while you set the length of the conveyor so it should be able to accom accommodate in this case uh, 20 parts Okay, and that's it for this tutorial. So we were using uh, conveyors and we explained the difference between the continuous and fixed conveyor.